Rivlin is with us right now, the former Federal Reserve Vice Chair. She was the original CBO Director on the Debt Commission. You name it, she's done it. Ms. Rivlin, great to have you. <laughs> Good to be here, Neil. Um, you know, the markets don't know what to make of the message, I guess, Ben Bernanke was, was sending. But I guess some seven years after the meltdown, uh, this idea that, that we're, we're not quite back up on our feet. I think he was saying... You know, we, we, there's a limit to how much of a rate hike we could take. I think he kept it around a percent. We're not ready for that. Are we ready for a quarter of that? Do you think we're ready for a quarter percent rate hike right now? Oh, I think so. Uh, shows like this one have been talking about it for maybe a year, maybe longer. So everybody should know it's coming. And uh, the economy's in pretty good shape. It's not great. And everybody's worried about China and the emerging markets and so forth. But domestically, we really are doing quite well. And we need to have some room in case things go badly. The Fed has to be back in some sort of a normal range so they can operate monetary policy in both directions. And right now, they really can't. In other words, to have a little bit of ammunition in case things get out of hand. Now, now, I guess what I'm asking, though, is the markets seem to think that after that jobs report came out last week, that it's less inclined to hike rates this year. Do you agree with that? Oh, uh, <laughs> if they... If they were at 75 uh, percent, maybe it's 72 now, uh, I have no idea. The, they certainly have signaled their intention to hike rates before the end of the year unless there's a disaster. And there has not been a disaster. The jobs report was, uh, was weaker, but uh, that doesn't mean the next one will be weaker. They jump around. Yeah, I see what you mean, but I, I guess I, I keep going back to Ben Bernanke and not only his book, but what he was telling our Maria Bartiromo and this idea that if not for the Fed, we'd be in a lot worse shape. He particularly fingers Congress for sort of dropping the ball. Um, and of course, you know, all bets were off at that time. I remember covering the meltdown, everything was going on. They were, they were doing it on the fly. But do you think looking back at it and the four trillion dollar balance sheet and the rescues that begot rescues and uh, then it was the auto industry, then it was kids in college who were behind on their loans and on and on and on that it was a bad thing, that we overdid it, that we let a dangerous genie out of a dangerous bottle. What do you think? No, I don't think so. I think they had to react very aggressively. We never should have been in this situation, but once we were, uh, the financial system was gravely threatened. We could have had a much worse situation. They had to move in aggressively, and I think it wasn't a perfect uh, show. It was a lot of uh, ad hocing at the beginning, but uh, basically they had to do what they did, and uh, we now have come out the other end uh, in reasonably good shape. Our economy is doing better than uh, most of the rest of the world. All right, well, that, you could also, say we're, the, we're, point we, is, you could also say we're the tallest midget in the room, right? I mean, uh, I understand what you're saying, but I guess well, what I'm asking is... No, I don't think that's right. All right, all right. So the, I don't we're think not exactly right, a game you know. growth, Alice, right? No, uh, we're certainly not. Uh, but after that deep a crash uh, and that huge uh, mortgage foreclosure crisis, which is still uh, uh, dragging on the economy, uh, after that, it was uh, hardly to be expected that we come roaring no, back. You're it was right a about very. That. But, but, but I'm also reminded of what Ben Bernanke wrote in his book and has echoed in some interviews that he thinks housing is is showing some traction and is gaining. He is not at all dissuaded by those who think it's hiccuping and fast. What, what do you think? Uh, that it's hiccuping? <laughs> yeah, that it's, that it's losing uh, its team, uh, so that housing is is in trouble. Well, I don't, I don't think we know, uh, but uh, it doesn't have to do with us. It has to do with the rest of the world. Uh, we clearly have a slowdown in China and in much of the emerging market world uh, for uh, reasons that don't have to do with us, but uh, could affect us seriously. And uh, we don't know how long that will last and how seriously we'll be affected. That's certainly true. Uh, the 
uh, there's some risks on the downside, but that doesn't mean that our economy isn't doing better than a lot of others. No, and, well, there's, and, no doubt, uh, there's no doubt know, about that. I guess, but I, I'm worried when I hear the IMF, and like today, you know, lowering its global forecast. Not that they're always right on the money, but they, they painted this picture that minus China, which they don't think will get much worse. The rest of the world potentially could. Uh, they also talk about what's going on in Germany. We've seen signs today that its factory sector is slowing down. And in that environment, you have a lot of global leaders kind of urging the Federal Reserve to go slow on hikes in interest rates, that it could do more harm than good globally. What do you think of that? Well, I think that's possible, and I'm not surprised they're saying that. Uh, it's, uh, it's a judgment call. Uh, it has been a judgment call for some time, and the Fed has uh, made the judgment that they would go very, very slowly and not get back to normal uh, as soon as uh, many thought they should. Uh, but uh, doing it by the end of this year still seems to me a good bet, unless things deteriorate badly. You know, recently, uh, Alice, uh, Senator Ted Cruz has said this is more proof we don't need a Federal Reserve. Rand Paul, it <laughs> has outlived its usefulness. Who are these appointed brainiacs? Uh, I'm just wondering here whether this kind of tone written by a former Fed chief reinforces the argument that a very powerful institution is accountable to no one. What do you think? Oh, I don't think so. The Fed is accountable uh, to to the Congress, and uh, the uh, they report regularly, and there have been much more transparent. Uh, Bernanke uh, was more transparent than Greenspan, and Yellen has been even more transparent than uh, Bernanke. We know a lot about what the Fed is thinking. They're more explicit about uh, their choices, but they got a j hard uh, judgment call. I don't think they're mysterious. I think they've just got a hard decision, and they've well, they been telling everybody you're, you're, how you're, hard you're, it you're is. You're very smart, Alice. They're a little mysterious. Man. It's oftentimes very difficult to discern their views, but the one thing I did discern from at least Janet Yellen not too long ago, is that she did draw a line in the sand when it came to interest rates and that they, they would go up this year. Is it your betting that they will, and is there a danger if they don't when you draw that line in the sand? Well, they always are very careful to draw the line uh, unless conditions change or something like that. Right. Uh, so they're protected if uh, something really bad happens. Uh, they won't raise. But if uh, things go as most uh, people now expect, I think they will raise before the end of the year because there really is a strong case for getting off the zero bound and back into a more or less normal range. I don't expect uh, that we're going to have high interest rates anytime soon. Uh, it'll be a very gradual raise and uh, they will assess the situation all along and possibly pause it or even reverse it uh, if uh, we have as weak a world economy affecting us as some people think. Do you focus on the markets or did you at the Fed? And a lot of people say they shouldn't, but it's understood that they do uh, because the last non-hike um, really rattled them. Do you put that in the equation when you were there? Should they? Well, I haven't been there since the 90s. We certainly <laughs> were focused on the markets uh, that uh, in the uh, dot-com bubble, right. uh, we, uh, we thought, thought about that a lot. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the Fed shouldn't be uh, playing to the, to the markets, but it also should not be surprising the markets. And I think that's why they have been so careful to be more explicit about what they intend. Alice Rivlin, real pleasure. Good catching up with you. Good talking to you. All right, Alice Rivlin.